Let's look at a couple more examples here of factoring when the coefficient here is not 1. So in this case, it's 3. Well, we learned in the last video what we should do is take this 3 and multiply this 6. But before we just jump in head over heels, there's something we actually have to consider. And that is, do any of these terms have a common factor already that we could just take right out? And in this case, the answer is yes. This becomes 2, or sorry, not 2, 3, excuse me, 3 times by x squared plus 3x plus 2. So taking that 3 out was actually really essential to helping us solve this. So if there's ever a constant multiple, or, or in other words, if every term has a common factor, in this case it was 3, then you want to take that out first. So that's what we did. And now we can just factor the inside like normal. And so what are the factors of 2 that add up to 3? So the, the only factors of 2, of, of positive 2, are 1 and 2, or negative 1 and negative 2. Well, we're looking for a positive 3, and 2 plus 1, uh, sorry, 2, 1 plus 2 is, does equal 3. So that factors quite easily. This becomes 3 times x plus 1 x plus 2. Okay, so if we had if we had if we hadn't taken that 3 out, we would have actually made our lives quite miserable. And there's no reason that this 3 is orange, it's not special or anything. I I just just for illustration. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now let's look at this case. We have a 6 here. Let's make sure that that there's not a common factor of 6 or 2 or 3 in any of these other terms. Well, uh, clearly there's not because 11 is a prime number, its only factors are 1 and 11. So there's no factor of 6 or 2 or 3 in there. Okay, so let's go to our, our grouping method. So we're going to take 6 and multiply 60, or sorry, multiply 10 to get 60, so that will become 60. And now we want to find factors of 60 that add up to 11. So let's just kind of brainstorm. We don't have to name all the factors. We know 1 and 60 aren't going to na uh, add up to 11. So let's just be smart about this. What about 10 and, uh, so, sorry, negative 60. So what about 10 and 6? And before we even write any negative signs, we could see that this will either be 16 or it will be 4. So that's not right. We need negative 11. What are some other factors? Well, 2 goes into to 60, but that's going to be 2 and 30, so we don't want we, 2 and 30 is not going to work for us. What about something else? 60 minutes, or, or 60 is, is a nice round number. You can think of it as in terms of minutes. That might help. And we know that there's four 15-minute segments in an hour. I don't even know if that's helping what I'm saying at all. But I, I like to think of, of breaking this into four pieces. Uh, as being like quarter hours, or in other words, 15 minutes. Four, what I'm trying to say is, is 4 times 15 is 60. And there is a combination of 4 and 15 that will add up to negative 11. And that is negative 15, positive 4. If we add those two together, we get, we get negative 11. And we also get, if we multiply them, we get negative 60. So those are our two factors. So those are kind of our special numbers. 4, positive 4, and negative 15. I apologize about that tangent about minutes. It's just a way that I, it helps me remember about 60 being able to be divided this way. Anyways, uh, let's continue here. So, we're going to take our 6x squared, keep leave that alone, our negative 10, leave that alone, and then we're going to rewrite negative 11, now we're getting, sorry, negative 11x, as positive 4x minus 15x. Of course, that is negative 11x. And now we're going to group. So we'll get 6x squared plus 4x. That's our one group. And then we'll add negative 15x minus 10. And now we want to factor out anything that's common between these. So in this case, we get a, a, a 2x a 2x times 3x plus 2. That comes out. And then we'll add to that. Uh, what comes out of this? Negative 5, it looks like to me. So negative 
5. And what's left? Uh, this will be 3x plus 2. Oh, I should do that in green. Sorry. That's what, that's what my mind was thinking about. What color do I need? Okay. 3x plus 2. Okay, got it. Actually, my mind is wandering a little bit because in the background, I'm actually at my grandmother's house right now. And in the background, she's watching Oprah and this guy Michael Pollan is on. And the things that he has to say are pretty interesting. So, anyways, I just exposed myself as, as being one who makes these videos at my grandmother's. <laughs> uh, I do live with my grandmother when I'm not in school during the summer. Anyways, let's continue. Um, so, this is 2x minus 5 times by 3x plus 2. So, that's our final answer. We successfully factored this scary looking trinomial, three terms, this scary looking trinomial. We, we factored it and it wasn't too difficult. So again, we just take the coefficient, multiply it by the last term, find the factors that add up to the middle term, replace group and factor. So you don't have to memorize these steps, just think about what's going on and, and hopefully it will start to make sense to you why this method, method works. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.